So welcome everyone to the Seven Sisters Top Knit Along. This is the top we're knitting. And it's a very simple summer top knit in the round on gorgeous blue sky fibers, uh, organic cotton, which I'm just thrilled. Those of you who purchased the organic cotton, you are in for a real treat if you haven't started already. How, who, who started already? I have. Oh, yeah. Oh, look. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> now, I know your name isn't John, or at least I don't think it's John. I can't hear you. I'm Ruth. It's John's computer. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> <laughs> I knit slowly, so I figured let me start early. Right. Well, this first, this first, um, we're going to take this in three sections. Um, this first time is just the casting on and then the making one right and making one left. So I can help you guys through How that. Are you? If you have any trouble with that. Um I can help you guys through that. And then mostly the next two weeks, you're just going to be knitting that 15 inches. If you look at your directions, you'll go down to the front where it says divide the, the front and the back. But we'll get to that in a second. Let's start right now with the casting on. Is everybody, everybody's good with casting on? My, my yarn hasn't arrived yet, so I'm going to start it on Monday. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. It was a little late. That's my fault. Well, and and we had issues with our um, shipment of the yarn. In fact, we had a couple shipments that got, one got just plain lost, and the other one was stuck in, in snow um, back, I don't know, <laughs> we had two weeks ago when we had some snow. So we had a little issue with late, um, work. late uh, delivery. Yeah. So... Yeah. Does everybody use the long tail cast on to cast on? Is everybody good with that? I, I never told how much yarn to yeah, put off. How much yarn what? To, to use on the long tail. Oh, you know, okay. I, I either have like enough for an afghan or a blanket, yeah. or I have enough for a glove. It's, it's, it's frustrating. Yes. Okay. So I can give you a little tip on that if you'd like. Okay. Um, it works pretty good. It's not perfect, but it, it, it works quite well. Um, here, let me switch the cameras. And this will help you from Mary Beth. This will help you from having to cast on four times. He's talking. <laughs> yeah. He's doing okay. His truck is in the garage. So we have somebody talking. Can you mute yourselves if you're not talking, please? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, um, you know you are you you can mute your mute everyone. Um, if you have your participants open, you can mute everyone um, at once because you have quite a few people unmuted right now, and the background noise is really making it difficult. Sorry, now I muted you, whoever was speaking. Thank you. <laughs> okay, got it. I think we got everybody. I think we got everybody muted. Okay. All right. So you have your needle. It, it's nice to use a little bit longer when all I have sitting here is a 3.5 needle, but um, you take your yarn and you wrap it around. 10 times. So there's once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've got it wrapped around my needle, the size needle that I'm going to use, not just any needle, but the size needle that you're going to use to cast on. And wrap it around 10 times and then leave maybe just a little bit extra. Take it off the needle. Now, this is how much you're going to need for 10 stitches. So you, you've got enough for 20 here, and then you just keep wrapping. Got enough for 30 here, 40, 50, and so on. Does that make sense? Then once you've got them all wrapped, let me see, where's the camera? Once you've got them all unwrapped, 
or wrapped up, then you unwrap them. And now I've got enough yarn here to do a cast on for 40 stitches. And I can and I can do my my cast on as usual. Does that make sense? I can do it again. It makes sense to me. Okay. Makes sense to me. All right. So whoever asked the question, does that help? Oh, Julie, that was you, right? Does that help you, Julie? Okay, cool. All right, cool. I mean, sometimes it still comes out. I did it with mine and I and I I try to be a little generous because there's nothing more frustrating than coming out with too little. So I did have a little bit extra. And then I just wind it up like this um, and go ahead and knit. And then if, you know, if I need a little extra at the end, I've got a little bit or something to, you know, obviously I don't have to sew any seams here, but um it's okay if you have just a little bit extra. In fact, I'd rather have just a little bit extra than not enough. So hopefully that helps. So you cast on, let's see, let's go through this very, um, cast on and you work in the knit two purl two rib for five inches. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes. Yes, my pattern, um, I haven't gotten the pattern yet. Can you tell me how many to cast on? I sure can. Um, if you need, what's, what size are you making? Um, yeah, I'm making the extra large. So the extra large is the fourth one. Is that, let me see. One, two, three, four, it's the fifth one, it's the last one. It's 180, 180 stitches. Thank you. You're welcome. I guess I have a question. I've never made anything like this before. So when you say for the five inches, would you be able to just like show us where you measure from? Like, is it a pretty neat at the bottom? up to where the stitch sits on the needle or you know i i did i did just slightly less than five inches how it ended up for me was i i measured and you can't see right now because i'm past it but i i included the needle and i went all the way down to the cast on when i knit my five inches simply because I felt like if I were to make that more generous, it would really be a lot deeper than what I wanted. And truly, there's no right or wrong when it comes to this. If you want it slightly less, then do it slightly less. You'll just have more stock in that when you get up to your, you know, 15 and a half inches or whatever they, you know, 15 and a half, you'll have slightly less. Um, I just like kind of found the thing over there, Mike. Oh. Pardon? The thing that I have to set the phone up. Okay, I'm gonna get it. Here, let me pull my. Um, Thank you, that answered my question, great. Okay, excellent, thank you. I have a question. Yes. Um, I've never made a bottom up sweater, I've only made top down. And my hips are wider than my shoulders. So I always have to add extra at the bottom. But on this one, I was going to make the small, but it doesn't say how large it will be at the bottom. It says what the bust will be, which is 44 and a half. But I'm wondering what the difference is. And so I was thinking of casting on, well, I already did, cast on the medium. And then with the when you increase, just not doing so many increases. Does that make sense? Or what, what would you advise for that? Um. Yeah, that's interesting. And it's 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 funny you should say that because I was actually thinking about that myself. I'm I'm looking to see where the the sweater falls. And, yes. And here it falls kind of above the widest part of your hip. So I was I, hoping, pardon? Yeah. I'm yeah, really so short waisted. So I measured 23 inches down from my shoulder. And I'm swollen right now because I just had my hip replaced. 
Um, but it was 42. And I think I'll probably lose a couple of those inches for, with the swelling, but I'm still going to be 40 around where I would like for it to hit. And, and you I, want it to be a little bit generous. Right. You don't want it skin tight. Exactly. So yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. So I cast on 156 instead of 144. Um, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, I hate to make the whole sweater and go, oops, that doesn't fit. Yeah. I'm I'm just wondering if your sweater is going to be. I mean, the silhouette of the sweater will simply be a little different. You know, right now the silhouette's going to be slightly like this. I mean, the bottom, uh, this is a small as well. And you and see, what does it measure? Um that that'd be really helpful. Well. With the rib all pulled in, it measures. It only measures like 27 with the rib all pulled in, but you know, it's going to be like this when you put it on your body, you know, it's going to, it's very easy for it to pull out just a little bit. So let's see what that looks like. Um, 17, so 34, actually that's, yeah, that's not very wide. No, that's not very I'm wide saying. at all. My hips are way wider. So I'm even wondering if I should cast on the large. I just don't know what to do about that. It's so hard for me to advise you, you know what I mean, with with knowing, not knowing how you want it to fit and not knowing, you know, your gauge. Well, of course, it, like the skinny model. That's what I want to look like. Now. <laughs> Do I should look like that? Yeah, absolutely. Me too. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. in a large and it measured out to 38 inches wide. The large measured out to 38? Yeah. Wow. Is, is, that, with, is that with the rib being stretched? No. Yeah, yeah. So it'll stretch another probably what five inches. I mean, it'll stretch a lot. Forty-four then. Yeah, forty-four for the large. With the large. Yeah. Also, I don't uh, know if that helps. Also, like I, I, you know, I'm about two inches. So with this, I can see this is the large. I can see around my waist how it's gonna fit. So maybe if you just, I know it's annoying, but if you just do to. Uh, knit two inches. I think you can have an idea if it's going to be okay. about the same, uh, about the right size, maybe. Okay. Good idea. Thank you. Yeah. No, I, I would put that much time into it. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's going to block out a little bit. Cotton yeah. has a tendency to kind of relax. And With so, the cotton, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you don't want to make it too large or you're going to have a baggy sweater. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to try this medium. I'm going to knit a couple of inches with the medium and see how it looks. And I'm just afraid if you go straight up, you're not going to get a nice silhouette. I hear you. But um you know, you, you might, all, all I can say is try it and see if yep. you like it. Okay. I appreciate sure. your help. Thank you. And, yeah. and the other lady, I appreciate her help. Yes. Yes. Rachel. Thank you. Any other questions? If you want it smaller than 40. Well, what size are you making, Lorraine? An extra small. Extra small. And you want it to be an I'm extra smaller. 40 inches, I'm going to be like swallowed up in. Like real big. I'm tiny. <laughs> Well, extra small says that it's going to be, the chest is going to be 40 inches. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, 
you're going to want, you see how it fits on the model. It fits quite loosely. There's a, there's quite a bit of fold here, mm -hmm. you know, unless you want it skin tight. Um, if you want it smaller, then I would suggest use size smaller needles. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just, but don't go more than one size down. Uh, uh, yeah, just one size down. Yeah. Pam? Yes. Hi. Um, I got gauge for the body of the sweater on 11s. So um, do I go to nines on my, for my smaller needles? Because the, the pattern called for size 10 and size eight. So I had to, to get gauge, I went to size 11 needles. So should my smaller needles be nines? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't, uh, yeah, definitely, okay. yeah. Otherwise it's okay. going to look so different. It's going to look strange. Okay, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. For those that have already started, are there any hints in working with this cotton as far as for, um, uh, because it definitely is different than wool? Well, how does, I, and then, oh, how does Rachel, how do you feel with it? It's it's awesome. It's lovely. Like I'm an um, advanced beginner. I just started knitting a year ago this month, and um, this is lovely. This is like I've tried cotton before, like just regular cotton. This is almost wool. <laughs> you know, it's so soft and it's easy to knit. Like honestly, it's it's a pleasure. So, yeah, yeah it's gorgeous, you. gorgeous yarn. I I find that it knits very very easily, and uh, I mean. I don't know. I found that it's very simple to knit with. Anybody else? I enjoyed the texture. Yeah. 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 yeah it's very, it's very easy to work with. I've, I've worked with other smaller cotton thread, almost like thread, you know, cotton yarn, and it splits. Mm -hmm. This right. does not split. This is nice. Yeah. No. Blue Sky Fibers just has just lovely, lovely yarn. I've this is the second knit along this year with with um, Blue Sky Fibers yarn, and it, it's just beautiful, mm -hmm. just beautiful. Because so, it do, because it doesn't have the elect, electric, um, elect electricity. Elasticity. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even say it. Uh, though, would you recommend maybe sizing differently, sizing down or sizing up? I wouldn't recommend sizing up because cotton does have it just cotton in general now i i don't know about this but cotton in general has a tendency to to relax and kind of bag and stretch out so um no i wouldn't size i wouldn't size up i would i would try to get you know the regular size in fact the one i'm knitting i knit a i'm knitting a small and i feel like the measurements are slightly small for me um but I'm I'm soldiering on because I don't want it to be too big. That's, you know, I that's just my, but that's my preference. That's why I have such a hard time answering people when they say, what size should I, you know, what size should I make? Because everybody kind of has a preference. And and my preference is, is that I don't want it to be baggy and, and saggy on me. So I, I, so, you know, I, I could be wrong. I, I mean, that's, that happens in knitting. We choose the, you know, sometimes we choose the wrong thing and we wish something else, but um, especially because it doesn't have sleeves. So there's, there's not all this tightness to worry about through here. Uh, you know, it's going to, it's going to have a lot of room. I just feel like if I make it too big, it's going to gap and hang around my shoulders. That was my thought process and maybe by session three i'll be telling you something different <laughs> i'll be telling you this is too small i gotta give it away <laughs> oh. yeah when i swatched um and i blocked it the the swatch i could see how i could manipulate the size if i you know, pulled it a little bit more as it dried. Oh, oh, you you blocked it as well. Oh, what did what did happen yeah. when you blocked it? Um, well, 
initially I, I, I soaked it and then, you know, put on a towel and I, you know, dampened it down and everything. And then I, I could see if I, while it was still damp, if I just kind of tugged it a little bit, that it would stay. So if I pinned it, I could make it a little bit, the swatch a little bit bigger than it started out. So yeah, I know I'm going to be able to make this fit through, through blocking. Yeah. And see, how much I, bigger would you say? Um, well, it depends on how much, I mean, cotton is, it likes to grow. <laughs> I want to say it likes to grow in, when it's wet. So while it's wet, you can probably give it, you know, at least another stitch or two in, in your stitch. Count. Maybe another 10, 15%. Maybe, yeah. Maybe 10. Because I, I was just at gauge when I knit it in the larger um, needles. And then when I soaked it and dried it, I could, um, and then I measured again. I gained another one or two stitches. Mm -hmm. Now, could you have, could you have, could you have just left it the size that it was or did or did it naturally grow just a little bit and there was really nothing you could do about it? Um, I'm trying to think because I did this watch a while ago. Um, I think if I just left it and just kind of, you know, pressed it down on the towel, it, it would have just stayed the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I could yeah. see where I can manipulate it to make it fit a little bit better. You know, wool does the same thing. Um, I had a couple of wool sweaters knit for me oh, a winter or two ago, and they were too small for me. And they, I mean, they were, you know, like up here on this, on the wrists and just, just way too small for me. And they were hundred percent wool and I blocked them just really aggressively. And I love them now they're, they just fit me perfectly. So mm -hmm. I, I, and I have been, I tell you, I have personally, I have been upset more times by making things, oh, I need to make it bigger. I need to make it bigger, and then and then it feels sloppy and uncomfortable, um, unless you're wanting to make a super oversized um, sweater. But I've been more unhappy making them too big in 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 years past, just for what it's worth. So and things can be blocked. Cotton wool. I, I mean, things can be blocked quite aggressively. Um, if you're knitting laces and things like that, you know, you, you pull it out and it, it grows quite a bit. I mean, you'll, you'll, I don't know if you've ever had the experience of knitting lace on something, you know, small needles and you kind of end up with this small thing and then you block it and it's just like, oh, it just blooms and, and grows. So um, don't forget blocking. Don't get too frightened. That's why I'm not too scared. I mean, I'm not, what did I say this was? 20? stretched out what did i say 32 my hips are not 32 <laughs> so, i know that will surprise you to hear that but they're not <laughs> and so i'm i'm just going to cross my fingers and and hope that i can pull this out and and block it fine so we shall see stay tuned <laughs> Stay tuned. So, anybody else have any questions? Any thoughts? I've got a question. Yes. Marit. Marit? Is that Marit. how you pronounce your name, Marit? Marit. Marit. Very nice to see you, Marit. <laughs> okay. Um, I went ahead and I did a swatch that was um, in knitting around. Okay, that's the first thing. I did it on a size eight needles in stockinette. Mm -hmm. And when I blocked it, it did come out to be stitch-wise accurate with the same gauge, but row-wise, it was like um, two, two rows difference. And that's an easy one to fix because, okay. because it's rows, right. you, can, you can stop knitting whenever you want. Because just yeah. straight stockinette, pretty much. Yeah, it's it's stockinette, and it says to knit right after you do those increase rounds. 
Mm -hmm. It says work even in stock and neck stitch until piece measures 15 inches from cast on edge. So, so you'll just stop fewer rows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not a problem as long as it's rows. You always gauge for the stitches. Yeah, that's what yeah. I feel was more important. The other thing um, that I wanted to ask is that, um, because I did it on the size eight, which is what they recommend for the ribbing and everything, okay? And I'm gonna go with that in terms of knitting. Now, for the ribbing, um, I can either do the size eight or I can go down a size, to size, maybe size seven for the ribbing. What would you think? What are you going to use for the body? A size eight? Size eight. that's what my gauge is. Oh, oh, okay. No, I'd go down a size. Yeah, I'd go down a size. Okay. Just one. Just yeah. one. Size. So like a size seven for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So Pamela, may I have, may I ask a question? So, what is the plan? So, uh, the next couple of weeks we should um, knit up to like the body part up to the fifteen inches. Then we're gonna learn how to divide the front and back, I suppose, and shape the armholes, and then. Uh, and yeah, then... this time, this time, since there's so much knitting involved in this first section, we're just going to go up to working until up to the armholes essentially working that 15 right. inches and okay. then um if you want to go ahead and divide the front and the back on your own that's fine i mean you can do any of this on on your own obviously yeah. but um i like to use personally i use interchangeable needles so i like to use i'll i'll get another um another needle and it doesn't matter what size it is with another cable when I want to separate and I'll just take the the stitches off so I would take I would place for me making the size small I'd place 80 stitches I'd place 80 stitches yeah. for the back take my um needle off and just put needle stoppers you know that that come with your interchangeable needles now if you don't have that you can just use yarn, put yarn on a big darning needle or tapestry needle, and then just slide it through and, and tie it, you know, tie it together so that it doesn't slip off. You can use that to hold the stitches. That's perfectly fine. Um, I have stitches older that I like. Uh, they are, uh, you can open on both sides. So it's two sizes. So you can open then this, this side or this side. So you can always pick up where, you know, like, you don't have to think about where you will pick up from because it's it yeah. you can start from if that's long side. enough that's great this yeah is, this is kind oh. of this is kind of thick yarn i mean you know it's it's okay hard yarn and it might not be i don't know right it, it, if it works that's that's great too i have those that i use for smaller yeah i just personally yeah, love it might not use, be long enough that's right yeah i just love to use my interchangeable needles and then put the little caps that come to screw on the ends i just put those on the ends and i've got it then i can try it on yes 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 like that um like that john uh not john and i forgot again it's <laughs> Mar ruth no worries ruth ruth, ruth. <laughs> can you show again uh ruth so we can see from big okay so is that something that you bought separately well, those, never are, seen those, those. Are inter, those are interchangeable needles and they come yeah. with the caps so that you can. Oh, you can, I have the uh, Knit Pro and Interchangeable and it's a round thing. I didn't know yeah, what yeah, to yeah. do. So maybe that's it. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just <laughs> use a smaller needle, one of your okay. smaller interchangeables, another cable, pull one of those through and then just cap them with those little round caps okay. and, 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 um, Ruth has shy goose and so so she has the little square ends those yeah are yeah that's great yeah I didn't yeah. know what 
these were for. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. And I do that too when I want to stick a long cable through to try something on, you know, to um, you know, try a sweater on when I have when I want the, you know, the space to be able to put it on my body to see how I'm liking it or see see what length. Often the length has to be um tried on to be able to tell going like this and it <laughs> doesn't work so well you kind of need to put it on your body and that is the nice thing about top downs but I think this sweater is forgiving enough that um you're not going to have any problem you know deciding on the length deciding on that so did everybody have an easy time or is everybody good with the make one right and make one left no I see no's Katie, <laughs> I see your head. <laughs> um, I don't have my yarn yet, so I'm just, um, but I'm reading and I'm trying to decipher. I've really never done that, so I, I can't quite picture what that's going to be. Okay, so um, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to show you the make. It, it sounds much more complicated than it is. It's really very easy. Um, and then I'm going to give you a, a YouTube video that you can, it's not mine, but it's just one that you can use um going forward so let's flip it to the other camera yeah i've done them before but i keep forgetting whether to go in from the back or in from the front for the right or the left i just i know it's a look it's so confusing so let me get this or that it's easy to forget. It's like me every time I do the kitchener, I have to look it up because I never I don't do it often enough to remember. All right. So this is my my first sweater. Any of you who are newbie knitters or newbie? Yeah, newbie knitters. I am a lifelong knitter, left handed thrower. But I am now teaching myself to continental right-handed. <laughs> so this is my very first um, project that I've ever done a whole project with that. And I can see that, you know, I would say the same thing to me that I say to other people. You can see it's not perfectly even. My tension isn't perfect. It's because I've never, I've never knitted right-handed before. And um I'm I'm a learner. So you can see after a lifetime, you can still, you can still learn. <laughs> So, um, so, okay. So you knit to the, the direction, say, knit to the marker. So here's my <laughs> beginning of round marker right here. And then I'm knitting to the first marker. Now, first of all, everybody understands, don't they, that the 24 stitches on the 24 stitches, you know, between markers, let's see here, between here and here, those, those, let's see, between here and here, those 24 stitches, that's for over the shoulder, right? Does that make sense to everybody? Because sometimes it's good to kind of orient yourself as to why you're doing what you're doing. You are, you are going to increase on only the front and the back. You're not going to make your increases between these two markers right here. And you've got, I've got two markers on the other side with the same. I'm changing, I'm, I'm gonna, I should have put different markers on, you can't see these very well, but I've got two markers here and this is 24 stitches. And I'm not going to be increasing any stitches in this area here. This is for over the shoulder, okay? So, so the, the pattern will say to knit up to the marker, to slip the marker, and then to make one right. So to make one right, you go up through the back of this bar right here. Can you see that bar in between? these two stitches here's stitches here stitches here and right here is a bar if anybody can't see that please speak now and i'll try to make it more clear 
Okay, so that bar right there, you can either pick it up through the back like that, or if that feels awkward, you can pick it up with your right hand needle and slip it on to your left hand needle. So I'll do that again. You can either, here's the bar. I want to make one right. So I can pick it up and slip it on to, because this would be the same as if I was going through the back. So I pick it up through the front and slip it on through the back. Or you can just go dip down and pick it up through the back, either way. And then you knit this soon to be stitch, just like you would knit any other stitch uh, through the front of the stitch, just like normal. And there, oops, wait. I've played with this now so much that it's starting to look kind of, starting to look kind of goofy. Okay. Through the back. And there we've we've made a stitch and you can see the see the extra stitch and continue knitting on. Just as normal. And I'm slow. This is very new for me. It's kind of like teaching an old dog new tricks. You increase four stitches on the rounds that you increase. It's just four stitches on the increase round. Mm -hmm. Let me take a second right there. Sorry, Pamela, did you did you show already the make one left or I think I missed that one. No, I got to get to the oh. other side to show it. To oh, you. it's the other side. Okay, good. I thought I missed it. <laughs> Thank you. No, no, no. You have to suffer through my slow knitting. You know, it's so good to learn new things, especially as not all of you are older, but especially as we get older, it's so good to learn new things. And I think it helps our brains stay sharp. And what better thing to play with than, um, than knitting? Because you can't mess it up. It's just yarn. You can undo it and do it again. I've heard people say before, oh, they're so scared to do this or that. I'm so scared to try this. Well, what is the worst thing that can happen that you just completely mess it up and you have to do it again? There's somebody that wants to join. I'm almost there. Right hand through the back. There's probably something clever to think of to, to remember that the make one right goes from the back. I think right. Stephen West said if you, you can do a 
I'll be right back. Oh, there you go. I love it. I'll be right back. Okay, perfect. So then this is this this is the important thing because and the reason I say this is because these are mistakes that I this is a mistake that I've made before in the past. And that is then it says to knit to the marker before you knit to the marker, you slipped the marker and then you made one right. Now you knit to the marker, you don't slip the marker, and why don't you slip the marker? Because you don't want to be knitting those 24, increasing in those 24 stitches. Right, right. And see, something like that, when you're knitting, if you can sort of back up and get a big view of what you're doing and why you're doing it, it kind of helps you not make mistakes that you might just like, okay, well, I've got to increase again and I'll just do it like I did before. And you, you know, you, you do it, um, do it the same way. So anyway, and then this one is, okay, the make one left is the same way. You can pick it up with your right hand needle, put it on your needle as if you were putting that through the front, from front to back. Let me show you again, front to back. And then- and if you use your, sorry, if you use your other needle, you would take it from the back then? No, I just- No? I just pick it up. If I use my right needle, I just pick it up and then I just put it through okay. the, from front to back. Something I heard too, when you pick up that meat, uh, that yarn and put it on your needle, if you have it, if you're, it's a left leaning, you'll see like the yarn is leaning left. Then, you know, you pick, if you're doing a left, um, a left increase, you know that it's on the left. If it's leaning right, it's a right increase. Right. Yeah. So, okay, great. So going by that, which way is this one leaning? It's leaning left. So then the left one, you knit through the back knit through the back of that loop that you just picked up. You don't knit it like you don't knit it like a regular regular stockinette stitch. So the make one left, if you you don't do that, if you do this, you're going to get a hole. It, you know, and it, it's going to be all messed up. You can't you can't do that. You've got to knit through the back of that loop. And there you go, you've got another extra stitch right there. And if then you can move your, your um, marker over and knit another stitch. And do you see, do you see how, if I were to continue knitting on in the next row and everything, you see how that stitch just sits there, that extra stitch, and it's basically invisible. You can't see where I added a stitch, there's no hole. And it just looks beautiful. Would you be able to show that part again where you said not to stitch it through the front of the stitch, but to do it through the back? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I've come up here and I'm ready to, I don't like those markers. I like these markers better. Okay. Can you can you highlight yourself and make yourself bigger so we can see it better? I sure can. At least I think I can. There, sorry. I'm still finding my way around Zoom. Okay. So I'm knitting along, it's time to make one left. So I go through the front of the stitch, front to back. And you can see this loop. There's the back and there's the front of the loop and I need to knit through the back of the loop.
seems to be getting there. Maybe that was too close. Let's try that again. Make one left. I need to go front to back. So I need to get this needle front to back. So however I get it front to back, whether I pick it up and stab it in front to back there, or whether I dip it down and go front to back there. And then you can see this loop. Let me see if I can show you. Can you see how that, obviously it's not a finished stitch yet. And here's the back of the loop. And I put it through the back of the loop and pull the stitch up. Does that help? Want me to do it one more time? And I think it maybe if you showed the difference between knitting normally through the front, and but we're going to do it through the back, it might make sense to her too. Okay. So pick it up front to back. The make left is you put the, the needle in front to back. And if I were going to just be, I mean, I couldn't really do this, it wouldn't work. But if I were to be knitting the regular stitch, you see what would happen here? I would end up with this big old hole if I knit it like the way I would knit a regular stitch. We have to twist the yarn. We have to take it from the back and twist the yarn. Have you ever have you ever just done a regular stitch front knit front back? Let me let me show that as well. If you were just to knit this stitch from front to back, you would just put your needle in like normal. I mean, you know, just a regular stockinette stitch. You always take from the front, right? But sometimes patterns say to knit from the back. So this is a regular stitch and you can just stick your yarn in through the back. You do the same thing with this loop that you're creating. And you'll know right away if you knit it through the front because it will automatically create this big old hole. So this is what it looks like when you knit through the back. And this is what it looks like if you knit through the front. You'll have this big hole here. So you'll know right away if you've done it incorrectly. And Pamela, you mentioned uh, knit front and back. And to me, it would be an easier way, but there must be a reason why the pattern calls for um, make one right and make one left as opposed to uh, knit front and back. What, like, what, do you know why? Or I'm just, well, I'm just wondering. The, because the, they want the left and right leaning stitches. Yeah. Yeah, they want the stitches. They will slightly lean one direction. Oh. Or the you see back here, here's the last one hey, uh -huh. I did, and you see how it leans to the left? Mm. That means Thank this, you. see, so this right here is the front or back of my sweater. And the stitches on this side are going to go out this way. The increased stitches, I mean, are going to go out this way. And the increased stitches on this side are to go, are going to go, well, not there, sorry, I went too far. This side, see how they're right leaning. So I guess knit front and back would uh, be more appropriate if we had increases, in, you know, for something that would not need to go in one way or the other. Yeah, right? and something that you might not want to be so invisible. I mean, these are pretty, right. these are pretty invisible. Um, with, now you'll notice here, I have a little bit of a hole and this is because I'm just learning to knit continental and I didn't snug that, that, um, stitch up enough when I did it. It's, it's an, it's an elongated stitch. So there's a little tiny hole there. I think it'll block out. OK, 
Okay. Do you want to see that again? That totally helped me. Thank you so much. Oh, good. Good, good, good. So, good. so I'll be right back. So I like that. I'll be right back. <laughs> There's a question in the chat, uh, Pamela, a question from Denise who's asking uh, if uh, if you feel there's a difference between SSK and, and, and make one right. I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there is, a, there, there is a difference, but to be honest, I'm going to leave that to the knitting designers. I, I, I'm not, I know that there are, other, you know, there are others who might be able to answer that question better. Isn't slip, slip K a decrease, not an increase? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, that is a decrease. That is a decrease, but um, maybe, maybe the person who asked meant knit from back. Maybe that's what they meant. Yeah, knit two together is a decrease as well. And you want to increase for your arm. Right, right. So this is my last, so, so what you're going to do is you're going to increase four stitches for each of those increase rounds. You'll increase a round, knit three rows, stockinette, do another increase round, knit three rows, stockinette, and you'll, you'll do that four times, the first time and three more times. So you will have increased and, um, uh, like you will stitches. increase 16 stitches, four on each round. So it's not a lot, but, you know, it'll make some difference and you'll want that, that fullness. And I like the idea of having that bit of a um, shaping to it. Um, well, it should be four inches. The 15 stitches <coughs> is an inch. Yeah, it should be a lot. Yeah, so it's a lot. I mean, yeah. 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 I have a question. When we finish the increases with the stitch markers, do we then take the stitch markers out and continue up to our 15 inches? I'd leave them because we're going to, you're going to have to start taking the, the um, dividing the, the and, and then once you divide it, they'll come off. Yeah, once you put the back on hold, those those stitch markers will just naturally have to come up. But I wouldn't take them off until either they tell you to or they just won't stay on. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's good to keep oriented as you're knitting, you know, to understand why those stitch markers are there, what, you know, what they're delineating, and then to to keep that going. I missed the first 10 minutes trying to get on Zoom. Oh, talking about size. I normally wear a large, but it seems huge here. Should I knit a small if I want 44 inches at the bust? Um, I would say no, I would not knit a small. We, you might wanna catch the first part we were talking about sizing. Um, if you knit a small, the, the bottom is going to be very, very small. This is a small and it's about, what did I say it was? 30, 32. 32, 22. yeah. 30, 32 if I stretched it, 32 yeah. inches if I stretched it. And so that's that's going to be pretty small. I mean, if 32 is okay, I mean, some people are busty and then their hips are really, really small. So that might work. Um for some people, I don't know, does that help? Does that help? I can't see who's, who's asking. I had a question more about um, the continental knitting. Yes. Since you're 
fitting it. So I like to use that when I'm doing a knit row. I find it easier and quicker to move along than moving your arm to yarn over. But I struggle on a pearl okay. row trying to hold it. I can't fig I can't figure out how to hold it. <laughs> well, I'm I I can show you. Um and, and and you don't have to if it detracts from the the, the sweater, but I, I just didn't know. Um, and with dark and that, so it would be easy. You're just gonna knit. Yeah, exactly. Um, I am learning to pearl. Um, it's called um, the Norwegian pearl, and I purposely didn't didn't. Um, learn how to do it the regular way because I just wanted to learn one thing. I didn't want to learn one thing and then unlearn it. I'm, I'm trying to learn enough things right now. So um, the, Nor the Norwegian pearl, um, put it in like this, over, back around to the front and pull it through. And I'll do this more than once. What am I doing wrong? Here, I just did a bunch of them. Yeah. Wait, no, 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 no. Again, no. I, I mean to draw you off track if it's yeah I'm like a you have to you have to put the uh working yarn the needle under the working yarn first yes 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 thank you thank you thank you <laughs> I'm like a goldfish there okay. we go okay let's do this again so so here's it, it all goes under right there now you go. pull it out and then you swing it around twirl it there you go that's it Okay, so Elena, let me show you that again. To the back. Wow. And I found it pretty easy when I was doing the, the um, let me do it slowly again. When I was doing the, the rib. Just look up Norwegian Pearl on, okay. on YouTube and they'll have some lovely instructors. It reminds me of a German twisted cast on. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just learned that, that was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've been trying to learn to continental Pearl and yeah, I don't do that, but it's... <sighs> It, it's easier on bigger needles like this. Try doing it on number one for a sock, oh. and it's oh, oh. I have I have elephant fingers. It seems. Oh. <laughs> well, that's it's so funny that. I mean, it was it was a good experience, or I should say, it is a good experience for me to, um, to do this. I mean, literally I've knit since I was, I don't know, six years old, my whole life. I've been a left-handed thrower and um, my mom was left-handed. She taught me how to knit and that's, that's how I have knitted all of these years. And then I wanted to be able to show you guys on knit alongs. I wanted to be able to demonstrate things and I can't do that, you know, left-handed because I know I've spent all my life reversing everything that I learn. You know, I look at it and then I have to reverse and, and uh, flip things and I, and it would just be too difficult um, to show you how to do new things and, and make you flip them as well. So I decided to start learning how to do this. And at first it was kind of daunting, but but I don't know, it's been a, I don't know, what have I been knitting on this for a week or so? And it's it's really been easier than I thought. And I'm having I'm having a lot of fun learning something new. And I think it's humbling and good for us to try something <laughs> new once I, in a while. I found the knitting part of continental knitting is easier since I'm a crocheter as well. And it's just that motion is really yeah. muscle memory. But right. That other, and I've seen people do pearl and I'm like, 
Yeah, I, I can't quite get it. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. I I think I have this. When you slide it, I it seems like it's working. I'm not doing the sweater because I'm waiting for my yarn. I'm finishing a blanket while I'm watching you all. <laughs> so let me see who's who's talking. I'm sorry. Go ahead, say something. That was else. me, Elena. I was. Oh, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Looks like it's coming out right. Are you doing the Norwegian pearl? Yeah. I, cool. I think I, it seems like then at the end you you sort of pull the yarn right off. Yeah. You just you pull it off. And, and then you, you just from the back the whole time. P pardon? So you're actually working the yarn from the back the whole time instead of yeah you right. never have to flip the yarn to the front yeah yeah and okay. and then what then um once you've done it i won't flip it back to the camera again but once once you're finished just give the stitch just a just ever so slightly a tug just to yeah. kind of snug it down just a little bit before you do the next one yeah yeah i like it Ernie and Carlos talk about that Norwegian pearl quite extensively on one of their YouTube videos. Oh, good. I'll I'll look it up and and see if I can find it. If I find it, I'll post it with this recording. Oh, great. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I would love to just have the luxury of time just to learn and just you know and stuff. And instead, I have a business to run. <laughs> so I have to. I have to shoehorn my play in between <laughs> like everyone else does so let me see everybody's where they're at oh lovely lovely oh mary beth you're about ready to oh wow laura you're far along there you go did you make the ribbing just slightly shorter laura I did. I started on Monday. I did my swatching and read a whole lot, tried to learn about this. My first sweater, my first Zoom meeting. So complete newbie. Oh. But yeah, I stopped at three inches on my ribbing. Yeah. And yeah. then Can I you went show two, us, more, Laura? two more inches. Can you show us? Hold Can it you up. show us again? You need to speak so you're big. Okay. Oh, In the middle, okay. maybe. There it is. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's three three inches on the ribbing. And then I did two more inches of stockinette. And then I started the increasing. Right. right. <laughs> yep. That makes perfect sense. And the three inches is more of a kind of a, I don't want to say normal, but more of a usually expected size. Right, right. For that's the, what I wanted. Yep. Right, right. And that's and cool. I'm typically I'm between a medium and a large size. Um, but I'm making the small. Because oh, I'm really? hoping by yeah, and I did try it on. I met somebody down at my library group who told me how I can add the cable so that I can try it on and it fits. <laughs> so it's the small size that I'm making and it's fitting my 45 inch hips wonderful see wait who was it that was here it was Susie that was asking go ahead Susie unmute yourself the the small fits 45 inch hips yes yes what's it measuring at the bottom you know it's so hard when you girls were talking about it I got anywhere between 17 and 19 inches depending without on stretching it yeah, well, depending on how I lay it out in front of me. And then okay. double, double that. Yeah, double that. Yeah, so 40 between 30, 36 and 40 is what you yeah. got. Uh -huh. Yeah, it is a little snug. You know, I'm hoping to uh, drop an inch or so before summertime <laughs> when I want to wear this. But yeah, I I'm hoping it's going to fit. I think it's going to fit. Well, I think whatever else you're, you're whatever else um, of ease that you're going to want, I think you're going to be able to get that in blocking. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think the uh, German stretchy cast on would be better for the bottom of the ribbing because it will allow a little more stretch. So I would, I think I'm going to start over and change my cast on. I did not do the long tail cast on. What did you do? I did the alternate. I let me look. I have to look at my notes because this is all new to me. Let me see. I did the alternate cable cast on. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's very stretchy. So it's the same, yeah. same diff as you would get with a stretchy German, I think. The, this, the cable I cast on is just a little stronger. It's a little, you know, cable cast on is a little, gives you a little more substance down there. Um, mm -hmm. and, but, but the German, I think either one of those would work just fine as far as giving you extra stretch and extra. Yeah. Very well, pleased with it so far. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, I love the yarn. Well, it's going to be fun to go through this process with all of you and to um and to then see, say, well, this is what I thought it would be, and this is how, you know, it's going to be fun to see how it turns out. I'm I know that I'm going to make another one. So this, you know, I want another color because I'm just I just know I'm going to live in this thing this summer. Um so you can tell by the thickness of the fabric that it's that it's going to, I don't know, it's substantial and yet it's light, it's going to be absorbent. Um, and I just I just think it's cute as cute can be. So any other questions or comments? I'm not even watching the time. Hmm. Oh, we're a little over, but if everybody's good. Hello. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I haven't really spoken much um, Pam, this time around. I, uh, oh, oh, hi, Jennifer. Hi. Yeah, it was 14 hour days in a tornado watch. Um, so I didn't, I, I'm still not quite finished with my last one, um, but I have the yarn and everything ready. And the yarn is amazing. It is it's so soft. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful, um, wonderful. Your, what color did you get? I got the, um, I got the blue or oh, yeah, yeah, the, the Mayflower. Yeah. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was a really popular color. Yeah. Yeah. Was, I think was, that's I think that I'm going to knit that one for my next one. Yeah. I and, and I'm glad that I logged on because I was I I've, I've over the pandemic have grown. <laughs> we'll just put it that yeah. way. <laughs> my really. size is brown. And so I've been, you know, I've been of course everything is different in women's sizing. Um, and so I thought I was gonna do the large and I'm glad I I logged on because I decided to do the medium. Um and then I always do the long tail, but I just guesstimate it. And so I was really glad to learn about the wrapping around because I just did that. Excellent. It works Thank pretty you. good. Yeah. Works I'm excited. Well. Much better than getting to the end and being like, oh, wow, I didn't pull off enough. So mm -hmm. yeah. you're welcome, Rose. You're welcome. Welcome. Cheryl. So great. Oh, let's see. Adrian asked a question. According to my gauge, I need to go down a needle size. Will I go down a needle size for all? Yeah, I would. Adrian, are you still on? Sorry, there's so many of you. I'm fumbling around a bit. I've been working on my swatch as we've been talking, and I am loving the, the fabric it makes. Excellent, excellent. OK, well, if everybody. Oh, happy knitting, Rachel. Have a great, have a great week. We'll see you, or two weeks. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. I just can't tell you how much fun I have seeing all of you and talking knitting. I mean, I'm a little bit isolated where I am right now. I, anyway, long story, but um, mm -hmm. it's just really, really does something good for my soul to see all of you and to talk knitting and chit chat and and to do something together that we all love so much bye joan thank you everybody have a great couple of weeks and if you have any questions shoot a shoot an email to support or jump in the facebook group actually that's probably the quickest way um, jump in the Facebook group and others will be able to help you in there or I'm in there to help you all. Bye, Cheryl. Um, so bye, everybody. Bye. Take care.
Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Ciao.